What is going on guys? Bang Lugan here coming back at you with another video. Today, starting a new series of the top 10 players at each position in the NFL. If you guys are new here, I would very much appreciate you guys hitting the subscribe button. And be sure down in the comments section below, tell me, who are your top 10 at each of these positions in the series that we're going to do? Starting off today at the quarterback position. And this was really hard for me. I've already ranked a, a lot of these position groups uh, prior to recording this series. And it's very, very difficult for a lot of these positions. Quarterback certainly is no exception because so many players are so close to the top 10 and there are going to be some snubs. And this will inevitably be a series that, you know, gets a, a lot of dislikes and garners a lot of negative attention because you guys are going to disagree with me. I doubt there's anyone out there that has the exact same list that I have. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it, starting at number 10. And number 10 for me is going to be Jimmy Garoppolo. Seems kind of odd that a quarterback who has never started a full season is somehow a top 10 quarterback in the NFL. And that seems ridiculous. And I understand that. And there are a number of players already... Um, Seeing Jimmy Garoppolo at number 10, especially, you're going to be like, there's no space for the rest of these guys. So some notable omissions to this top 10. Cam Newton is one of them. I think a lot of people are going to have Cam Newton as a top 10 quarterback. And for me, I just don't see it. Jimmy Garoppolo, though, uh, is a tremendous talent. You thought that maybe he'd be a system quarterback when he was successful in New England. But no, he goes to, at the time, the second worst team of the league record-wise in the San Francisco 49ers via trade. 49ers traded a second round pick to New England in order to acquire him. Jimmy Garoppolo, as a starter, wins out with the San Francisco 49ers. So we're talking about a bad offensive line. We're talking about limited weapons at tight end and receiver. Of course, they did have Pierre Garcon, who was dealing with injuries, and Marquise Goodwin is fast, but not much of a defense. Injuries as well, uh, and certain off the field issues as well for some players. Jimmy Garoppolo took that team and was successful in terms of fourth quarter comebacks, in terms of accuracy. He's one of the most accurate quarterbacks in the NFL. Tremendous last year, and um, I think he's a top 10 quarterback. He just sneaks in there. He might even have a chance to rise up the list in the ranks uh, next year if we go ahead and do this again. But Jimmy Garoppolo, for me, is a top 10 quarterback. There are some close guys that didn't make the cut. Jimmy, for me. I think he's going to continue continue to trend upward, and he will solidify himself as a top 10 quarterback by the end of the 2018-2019 NFL season. At number nine, I have Matthew Stafford. Matt Stafford, to me, uh, is a very close, you know, fringe top 10 player, and I just think that his numbers have been too good for him not to make the top 10. He's very close with a lot of these guys, you know, from... 8 to 15, you can kind of say, you know, it could go either way for a lot of them. Matt Stafford, he's getting the weapons. The offensive line is starting to get better. Of course, you go out and you draft uh, Frank Ragnow, center, in the first round. You've maybe drafted your running back of the future and carry on Johnson, I believe, in the second round. You have weapons at receiver. They cut Eric Ebron, so I'm not really sure who their tight end is going to be. But Matthew Stafford has made the most. Uh, out of these weapons in Golden Tate and a Marvin Jones, Marvin Jones Jr. I think he's Marvin Jones Jr. Uh, but Matthew Stafford, he's been very good. Last season, 4,400 yards, 29 touchdowns to 10 interceptions. Rating was near 100. Not that I take much stock in uh, quarterback rating, but Matthew Stafford continues to improve. Just turned 30 years of age, and I think he's continuing to get better and finding that sweet spot at the QB position. Matt Stafford, of course, is one of the best arms that we've ever seen in the NFL, has an absolute cannon, and he's, you know, starting to really define himself with accuracy and getting the touchdown on passes and, of course, leading his team to victories. The Lions and the entire NFC North, for that matter, is going to be an incredibly tight division based on the play of a lot of these teams because you look at the Bears being, I would say, undoubtedly the worst team in that division, and they're not that bad. It's going to be tough with the Packers. It's going to be tough, of course, um, with the Vikings as well. I have Kirk Cousins now. Another, I'm going to say it now, a notable omission from this top 10. But Matthew Stafford is a very good quarterback, continuing to get better. Uh, and he, for me, does crack the list. At number eight, I'm going to have Ben Roethlisberger. 
Big Ben for me is kind of a weird one. Uh, he's certainly on a downhill trend, but he's still a very good quarterback. He's very talented, definitely near the upper echelon of QBs in the NFL. Last year, 4,200 yards, 28 touchdowns, 14 interceptions. Uh, you do worry that in terms of you know other quarterbacks out there, he does have some of the biggest and most explosive weapons of any team in the entire NFL. You look at Antonio Brown, the emergence of a Juju Smith-Schuster last year. Of course, the best running back in football in Le'Veon Bell. One of the best offensive lines in football. He has a very, very good team around him, and he does play up to that level. Certainly, to me, not a top five quarterback anymore. I think he was very close to being top five, uh, if not a top five quarterback. But he still stays in the top 10. How many years left Big Ben has, I don't know. There's, of course, retirement talk with him uh, starting at last year. And I'm sure it will follow him this season and then inevitably next season if he does end up playing. But Big Ben is still a very, very solid quarterback. 4,200 yards for him last year, 28 touchdowns, 14 interceptions. A very similar season to his 2016 campaign. Big Ben, to me, though, he is going to crack the list at the number eight spot. At number seven, Carson Wentz. This was a very interesting one for me. I wasn't sure if Carson Wentz uh, was going to crack the list when I started this. But after a decent 2016 campaign as a rookie, 16 touchdowns to 14 interceptions. I will say about 3,800 yards though. He looked somewhat lost, but was decent. Showed signs of improving over the season. And then of course in 2017, he really took over. Uh, he was very, very good. Some of his throws were highly contested and he got lucky that you know the receiver came down with the ball. Uh, in his first half, even though putting up great numbers, he was a little shaky to me. Uh, his, you know, turnover worthy throw percentage was near the top of the league, but over the second half of him playing, he got very, very good and re was relying less on his receivers to make plays and relied on himself to make plays. Of course, fantastic pocket, uh, mobility and mobility to maneuver out of the pocket as well. He's got a very good arm and certainly a great throwing on the run ability. Unfortunately for Carson Wentz and the Philadelphia Eagles, well, not so unfortunate. They won the Super Bowl, but Unfortunately for Carson Wentz, at least, he was injured and sidelined for uh, the second half, most of the second half of the season, and of course into the playoffs, but he was dominant leading up into that. If he stayed healthy, he likely, to me, would have been the MVP, finished with about 3,300 yards, 33 touchdowns to only seven interceptions. He was very, very solid for the Philadelphia Eagles. Of course, they have a fantastic offensive line, uh, good receivers and good running backs, but he played very, very well, was a clear leader to that team, and was an extremely talented player. To me, he certainly makes a list at number seven. At number six, we have Matty Ice, Matt Ryan. Consistently, he's put up some of the best numbers in the NFL in terms of yardage. Of course, you've got Julio Jones to help you out there, uh, and Matt Ryan has certainly taken full advantage of Julio everywhere except for the red zone, it seems. Julio Jones just can't seem to get those touchdown numbers up despite having so many yards season in and season out. Uh, and after an MVP year where Matt Ryan threw for almost 5,000 yards, 38 touchdowns to only seven interceptions, he was a bit lackluster last year. 4,000 yards still, which is quite good. 20 interceptions, or excuse me, 20 touchdowns to 12 interceptions is not exactly what you want to see. I think it was a down year. He has another target out there that they went out and drafted uh, in Calvin Ridley out of Alabama. So I think that offense is only going to continue to improve. You have Tevin Coleman and Devontae Freeman out of the backfield. I think Matt Ryan could be one of the most overrated players on this list. The fact that he is number six and maybe not a number eight or a nine or even a 10 because Matt Ryan has had stacked players and, you know, he's had a stacked team with amazing players around him uh, nearly his entire career. But Matt Ryan, for me, when he's on, he's on. He's one of the best in the league to do it. Number six might be a little bit high for Matt Ryan, but I think after an MVP caliber year, I'm going to give him... I'm going to give him a break. After Not even caliber, but after an MVP year, I'm going to give him a little bit of a break on a down season. We'll see if he rebounds in 2018. At number five, this is going to be the most controversial one on the list because when I've done these on Twitter, uh, and I have, definitely make sure to follow me on Twitter. The link is in the description, twitter.com slash Designs. Again, link is in the description. A lot of people were not pleased with Andrew Luck being as high as he's been in my top 10. I have moved him down a slot. I've had him coming in at four uh, very often, but he slot down just one spot to number five. And the huge argument that is used against Andrew Luck is he's not on the field 
How can he be so good? How can he be so high on your list if Andrew Luck is never playing? And that's true. He didn't play last year. And that's it. He didn't play last year. He missed a season. But to me, and of course, he was injured through a lot of 2015. Um, and he hasn't played amazingly uh, over the past two years, partly due to uh, not having any weapons of any kind. And of course, you could say T.Y. Hilton. He didn't really emerge until last season uh, as or two seasons ago as one of the you know premier receiving options in the NFL. But wide receivers are ranking list for another day. Uh, but he was injured for a lot of that 2015. And then 2016 came back, bounced back, 31 touchdowns to only 13 interceptions. Andrew Luck, when healthy, is certainly a top five quarterback. He's one of the most talented in the league. To me, he's right up there with Aaron Rodgers. If he could stay healthy, he is without a doubt one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. For me, it's a no-brainer that he makes the top 10. His talent is over the moon. Andrew Luck is a phenomenal quarterback. He's got great accuracy. We talk about mobility with a Carson Wentz. Well, Andrew Luck has that same ability. Maybe he's going to start taking a few less shots as that offensive line continues to improve. But Andrew Luck does a lot with a little. He's extremely talented. For me, even though it's going to be controversial, he was a no-brainer at number five. At number four is Drew Brees. I've had him at number three in a lot of my rankings, I think he took a step back last year. With one of the best teams that he's ever been on, I think he personally took a step back. And of course, you can see it in terms of yardage as he dropped off from, you know, you were usually seeing him about 5,000, sometimes higher, and he was just a hair over uh, 4,000 last year, 4,300 yards. And it's not to me about yards that makes a good quarterback. It's about, you know, their arm strength and continual accuracy and most of all, decision-making. Drew Brees still has that decision-making, but his arm continues to get worse, and it's let him down. He's had the best team that he's ever been on. Not the Super Bowl 2006 New Orleans Saints. This past team, the 2017 New Orleans Saints, as a 38-year-old Drew Brees, this was the best team he has ever been on. Two more than solid running backs. Alvin Kamara has a nice change of pace. Mark Ingram is more of a bruiser. You have the wide receiver targets in Michael Thomas, who's one of the best receivers in the NFL. I, I don't really want to talk about Kobe Fleener. A, a solid, more than solid offensive line, one of the best in the league. The best defense that he's ever had behind him. And his arm strength let him down. I saw at the end of the Atlanta game, the first one uh, threw an interception on a bad decision for his arm. And it, it just really goes to show you that you can't play at the top forever. He can't make the same throws that he used to make, but his decision-making is still there. He's still going to be one of those QBs that throws for near the most yards in the NFL. His 23 touchdown to eight interception ratio was among the best in the NFL last year. Touchdowns are down as you see the New Orleans Saints become a more uh, run-heavy team with the emergence of a Mark Ingram and an Alvin Kamara as a rookie. Drew Brees is still good, though. I mean, you can't say anything else. Drew Brees is a tremendous quarterback. He's getting worse with age. I think he's going to adapt to his, his less arm strength now, and he's going to bounce back in 2018 for a very good season. Might not be as, you know, we've seen in the past with Drew Brees in terms of a ton of yards and touchdowns, but the Saints are going to do very, very well. Very, very favorable that they will see the NFC championship again. I think they're that good of a team, but of course that remains to be seen. Number three for me is going to be Russell Wilson. It was kind of a weird one for me uh, with Russell Wilson coming into the league. I thought he was a bit overrated, but he's proven to be anything but over the past couple of seasons, playing with one of the worst non-expansion team offensive lines in NFL history. It has been terrible. He's played with nothing and nobody, and he's proven that he is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL, leading the Seahawks. Uh, to countless wins and playoff victories and or, well playoff berths we should say they did not get a victory in this past playoffs if I'm not mistaken um, I believe they got the wild card spot they got eliminated but Russell Wilson has done so much with so little and that's so valuable to me as we talked about with Andrew Luck a little bit earlier and even Jimmy Garoppolo Russell Wilson has no time in the pocket whatsoever he scrambles around he finds time, and he finds the open receiver. He's so good at directing traffic. He's so good at finding the open man. He's so good at buying time. Russell Wilson is absolutely tremendous. That offensive line 
is so bad. And Pete Carroll says that it's not even one of their biggest issues. He thinks running back, so he goes Rashad Penny in the first round. Their offensive line is one of the worst in NFL history as far as non-expansion teams go, in my mind. But Russell Wilson shows that you don't really need an offensive line. He makes it happen all by himself. Now, is he one big hit from being sidelined for the year, you know, with that poor offensive line and the Seahawks having no shot to compete? Absolutely. I don't think any other quarterback in the league could do what Russell Wilson does with that Seattle Seahawks team. You know, that's that's a stretch. Aaron Rodgers, for sure, could, as we'll get to the top two here in a minute. But Russell Wilson, behind that abysmal offensive line, 34 touchdowns, nearly 4,000 yards, only 11 interceptions. And, of course, he's an impact player uh, in the running game as well. Russell Wilson, so talented, so good. He is the reason the Seahawks do anything nowadays. At number two, you guys see it, it's Tom Brady. It's going to be very controversial for the top two, as it usually is. Tom Brady, to me, you got to wonder, what can Tom Brady do to be the best quarterback in the NFL? And I'll tell you, number two is not so much about Tom Brady as it is about Aaron Rodgers, who is my clear number one, who we'll get to in a minute. The reason Tom Brady can't be the best quarterback in the NFL is because he's not Aaron Rodgers. All the Super Bowls, all the Super Bowl appearances, all the dominant regular season performances, the MVPs, I don't care. As much as I think that Tom Brady's a very good player, I think he's a system QB, and that's going to that's gonna ruffle some feathers. And that's not to say that Tom Brady's bad and he's only a product of his system. However, Tom Brady is probably in the best system of all time under Bill Belichick. That's why Tom Brady looks so good because he does, you know, a bunch with nothing as they don't have a ton of, you know, of weapons year in and year out, or at least name brand players other than Rob Gronkowski. And of course, I know that a Brandon Cooks was a name brand, a little bit of a player. And of course, you do have solid options in Chris Hogan and Danny Amendola was even decent for the for the Patriots. And then a running back by committee and they've had an okay offensive line. Tom Brady is a terrific player. And if Aaron Rodgers wasn't in the league, Tom Brady would be the clear cut number one. I would say just because almost of all the success that they've had. But for me, I don't think anyone competes with Aaron Rodgers. Tom Brady's been tremendous. So much success over the past years. Uh, his numbers have been amazing, but we'll move on to number one. And number one is Aaron Rodgers. To me, he is the most talented quarterback in NFL history. And you look at the numbers and you say, mm, Aaron Rodgers is not as good as Tom Brady. You see, he doesn't have the yardage, not healthy, doesn't have the touchdown to interception ratio, uh, except that he does all time. He has the best touchdown to interception ratio in NFL history. Aaron Rodgers is has everything you look for in a quarterback. Arm strength, mobility, decision-making, accuracy, clutch, if we want to call it that. Aaron Rodgers has played with no defense over almost every year of his career when he's been uh, the starter, and he's been so, so talented. You talk about making plays, getting touchdowns, getting yardage. He's an impact player in the run game as well. He can make plays by, you know, breaking out of the pocket, stalling for time, finding the open receiver, throwing the ball through impossible windows. I think Aaron Rodgers may not be the greatest quarterback of all time, as I think that's Tom Brady. Aaron Rodgers is the most talented. There has never been a player with the ability that he has. And now, I don't want to sit here and just suck off Aaron Rodgers all, all game, but how can you not? He's so good at everything. There isn't a thing that you look at where you say, ah, I wish Aaron Rodgers was better at this because he's so good at everything. Now, that doesn't mean there's no room for improvement, but if you were to build a Frankenstein quarterback, and if you don't know what I mean by that, if you could take somebody's arm and somebody's legs and somebody's you know brain or whatever, I feel like you take Aaron Rodgers in nearly every one of those categories because he's at the top or near the top in every single conceivable way that you could wish for in a quarterback. That's going to do it for this video, guys. Aaron Rodgers, to me, is the best quarterback in the NFL and the most talented of all time. I'm sure that's going to ruffle some feathers. Let me know down in the comments section below. We'll have a nice dialogue. Thank you guys so much for watching, though. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.